The Indonesian mass killings between 1965 and 1966 was a large-scale genocide responsible for the estimated deaths of between 500,000 and 3 million people, many accused of being communists or associates of communists. The victims were farmers, families and entire communities. Joshua Oppenheimer's Oscar-nominated documentary The Act of Killing centres its attention on Anwar Congo, one of the most infamous mass murderers and a notorious gangster with powerful connections in Indonesia. Despite the killings taking place over 50 years ago, the documentary illustrates that those violent perpetrators of the genocide still receive many benefits from having taken so many innocent lives. The documentary intends to capture this area of world history to educate on the devastation and illustrate how Indonesia is still led by a staunchly corrupt and anti-communist ideology that promotes violence to towards any political opposition, demonstrating a powerful and unsettling dictatorship. Through state-funded propaganda such as violent films glamorising the slaughter of communists, films that were viewed annually, played within schools and cinemas, to the misinformation printed in Indonesian tabloids, the anti-communist rhetoric still prominent in Indonesia has promoted a celebratory, nostalgic reaction towards the genocide of potentially millions of people. If someone was identified as communist, they would likely be executed, their families' human rights would also likely be restricted as they would be unable to study within schools, find a job or get married. These restrictions still prominent decades after the genocide. By following the notorious gangster and genocidal murderer Anwar Congo, a surprisingly open person in revealing the gruesome details of his murders, early in the documentary he takes Joshua Oppenheimer to a shop's rooftop, a metal wire around a pole and demonstrates how he would choke his victims to death while also admitting that there are many ghosts that haunt this rooftop, the ghosts of people he killed. Anwar Congo is also open about the immense remorse he feels for participating in the mass killing of civilians. After demonstrating how he choked his victims, Anwar reveals that he tries to forget the murders, the blood, the torture, by drinking, by dancing to music, smoking marijuana and taking ecstasy to repress the trauma that continued to haunt him. Joshua Oppenheimer's observant camera not only captures the powerful influence Anwar has in the country, being close friends with the governor of North Sumatra, participating in Pancasila Youth rallies, Pancasila Youth being the largest far-right paramilitary group in Indonesia and largely responsible for the genocide, but his camera also captures the human nuances of Anwar and his colleagues. Anwar and Herman often have a sense of humour despite Anwar's violent past and Herman's corrupt intention to drain money from the community. Anwar and Daddy share self-reflective discussions on their violent actions, both showing a sense of remorse, despite Daddy also being guilty of committing such violent crimes, and disregarding Joshua suggesting that, under the Geneva Convention, Anwar, Herman, Adi, and the people within political power in Indonesia, these people are war criminals. The act of killing's director's cut is certain that we view as much as possible regarding how these people interact with each other, how they interact with their community, and how they perform when they are encouraged to reenact their crimes in the form of their favourite movie genres. The Act of Killing's title suggests both the action to kill and the performance of murder. Joshua Oppenheimer encourages these gangsters to reenact their crimes, giving them creative freedom in whatever ways they see best fitting. With a budget for studio space, makeup, prosthetic effects, extras and camera crew, Joshua Oppenheimer is encouraging these killers to reveal themselves, opening up about their government-supported actions and sharing the details of their murders. Some of these reenactments are produced like musicals, westerns and the classic American gangster flick. These reenactments are difficult to watch despite having an initially rather surreal quality about them. Some scenes are debated whether they are a dream sequence. Some scenes reflect actual moments of the past, but when some 
details are performed, such as when Anwar Congo stabs and slices open a teddy bear, which represents a human child, then the act of killing is making the viewer confront a level of violence and human cruelty they may not have previously thought to have existed, bringing us to a brutal reality that the people within this film killed many innocent people, men, women and children. As Anwar and his crew were originally thugs who scalped tickets from the local cinema, they viewed many films in their youth which would then influence their actions as murderers, something which Anwar Congo admits himself within the documentary during a nationally broadcasted talk show which celebrates the genocide of supposed communists. Therefore Joshua Oppenheimer's film is also asking viewers to discuss the relationship between violent cinema and real life violence. Anwar Congo admitting that these kinds of films influenced his actions as a murderer seems to miss the intention of many gangster films. Films such as The Godfather or Goodfellas are not necessarily aiming to glamorise gang violence in a way that encourages people to participate in it, but films such as these encourage viewers to see criminality in a critical manner, the way it corrupts, manipulates and threatens those who tread in its path, the way Michael Corleone is inevitably drawn to the criminal underworld, the way Henry Hill becomes paranoid and fearful for his life. These films are criticisms of criminality and yet Anwar Congo did not view them as such. During his appearance on the talk show, the TV producers discuss how Anwar Congo is rumoured to have killed over a thousand people, how can he sleep at night, as well as other gangsters going crazy while others got rich, a part of the discussion they share, illustrating that not everybody is completely convinced by the nation supported anti-communist pro-genocide rhetoric, but that there is clearly still a fear of the influence and power that men such as Anwar Congo still have with journalists and politicians. This fear is further illustrated by the act of killing his own credit sequence. Many of the filmmakers involved in the creation of this documentary are credited anonymously, demonstrating the dangers of making such a revealing film as this one, a film which highlights the revels and jovialities that gangsters and corrupt politicians take stride in, in regarding the murdering of millions. It's a disturbing detail that demonstrates that nobody was exactly safe to make a film such as this. The act of killing remains banned in Indonesia due to its critical nature of the regime currently in power there. This caution for the safety of the filmmakers is understandable, as the Pancasila youth control much of Indonesia. This is a group which suggests itself to be a force for unity within Indonesian communities, as one of the leaders instructs Joshua Oppenheimer and his documentary crew, but this doesn't ring truly when the same paramilitary group is responsible for the murders of millions. One Pancasila member admits to having raped many women during the genocide, some as young as 14, telling them that it'll be hell for them, but heaven for him. This is a grotesque detail that reveals so much about the malevolent nature of this paramilitary group and highlighting their true nature. It's a difficult conversation to listen to, but it is essential that we listen to it. We need to confront how grotesque and malicious the actions of these murderers were and still remain. The malice is clear when after telling this story of rape, the group laughs. The genocidal evils that were in control in 1965 and 1966 have preserved into the present. To contrast the preservation of human evil, Anwar Congo demonstrates a surprising humanity. Despite his notoriety as a murderer, he is compassionate towards his family. He is gentle with small animals and prominent throughout the documentary is his sense of remorse and guilt. Anwar Congo's past actions as a murderer are clearly malevolent, yet his life seems to serve somewhat as a contrast. While watching back the footage of his reenactment a murder scene, he cries, talking to Joshua Oppenheimer, asking whether the people he killed felt this way. The removal of basic human dignity and the intense possession of terror, fully knowledgeable that death was imminent. Bluntly and honestly, Joshua tells Anwar that his victims would have felt much worse, as Anwar's overwhelming emotional experience is from performing in a film, whereas his victims' deaths were real. In his honest reminder, Joshua Oppenheimer therefore removes the disconnect that Anwar, and also us as the audience, have between cinema and violence. It is acknowledgement of truth. Violence on television, whether performed or whether a document of reality, is not as horrifying as violence experienced from the victim's perspective. It has taken Anwar 
Pierre Congo the experience via reenactments to reconsider his perspective of the violence he committed against other human beings. Previously disconnected from the real life violence due to his cinematic inspirations and status of notoriety, Anwar is now acknowledging the damage he has caused, showing a sense of empathy he was previously so resistant to exploring. As Anwar returns to the shop's rooftop at the end of the documentary, he is struggling to talk as he is retching intensely, feeling sickened at the thought of his own brutal actions. Once he was able to visually reenact and discuss the bloody murders and tortures he participated in, he is now depicted as physically unable to continue with the discussion. Joshua Oppenheim's camera has captured something monumental here. How often can it be said that a mass murderer is brought to tears and queasiness at their own violent actions? The fact that this documentary managed to capture these moments of rare vulnerability and emotion from a person with such a brutal reputation, Oppenheimer's relationship with Anwar Congo managing to overcome barriers to infiltrate such a personal resolution that would provide some form of apologetic closure to the families affected by this genocide is monumental. Anwar Congo died in 2019, aged 78. His obituary from BBC News written by Gareth Evans and including statements from both Joshua Oppenheimer and Pradita Sabarini, an Indonesian citizen, read, there would be no Hollywood redemption story for Congo. He married late, never had children of his own, and continued to be involved in crime after the film's release. But the act of killing had a life-changing impact on many Indonesians who watched it. The film is officially banned in the country, but private underground screenings were held there after its international release. Some of those were violently shut down by pro-military groups. Pradita Sabarini, who was forced to watch a government film at school that depicted the official version of events, says the film changed her whole perspective. When I watched the act of killing and saw the perpetrators being boastful, it struck me how morally wrong they were, and I felt very ashamed that I had never thought about that before, she says. I was ashamed that I hadn't been more critical. Oppenheimer says that perhaps unintentionally. Oppenheimer says that perhaps unintentionally Congo may have had a positive impact by appearing in the film, even if it wasn't what he intended to do. He helped catalyze a national reckoning inside Indonesia, he says. He helped transform the national conversation. He helped the world see that these killings happened. Despite the act of killings controversy in Indonesia, being banned and having its screenings violently opposed by the Pancasila youth, its existence and continued illegal screenings makes the film a form of activism, proven by Sabarini's statement. A form of activism further educating the public who dare to question the power of those who control Indonesia's dictatorship authority. In conclusion, Joshua Oppenheimer's The Act of Killing is a documentary unveiling horrific actions against human rights and how the perpetrators of those human rights violations now live rich, successful lives as perpetrators of a brutal dictatorship, a dictatorship fueled by propaganda. Within Oppenheimer's film, by following killers as they recreate their own actions and experiences, uncomfortable details, truths and nuances are captured and explored, especially via Anwar Congo and his own self-reflections. The act of killing remains an influential piece of activist and humanist cinema, as underground screenings educate the Indonesian public, and the Western world continues to learn of a genocide not frequently discussed here. Highly unsettling, the act of killing remains a completely essential piece of documentary journalism. Thank you.